Last year I was looking through some old magazines and I stumbled upon a cycling outfit and I found it so cool I wanted to make one myself. So I thought I would start with the cycling sweater and I found some pictures and even uh, instruction from 1897. So I thought I will start with that and I even had yarn in a fitting sickness. I started with a fancy pattern which is made of two stitches and two pearls and these are changing every couple of rows. I knitted all this part here and um, here you can see I had to reduce some stitches. That is one side and here is the other side. Usually it should play. More or less like this. So now here I have 40 less stitches than down here. And now I'm knitting with finer needles to get more stability to the waistline. And I started knitting with those two and a half needles here. And now for the waist I'm using two millimeter needles. Afterwards I will go on with the two and a half millimeter needles again. Basically I was knitting all evenings because I just wanted to get to the point that I could make the first fitting to see if it really fits to my body. And when I finished the waistline I transferred all the stitches to a needle with a long band or with a thread so I wouldn't have to fear that the stitches will fall off the needles. I think I can go on, even if I try to pull it down a little. Here's the waistline, so yeah, I'm quite happy. I was on a train and used all the time to knit. I think knitting on a train is amazingly relaxing. When I arrived I had already knitted quite a bit, but I realized that the whole thing was way too small. It wouldn't fit at the bust line, it was way too much tension. And as you can see here, the tension at the bust line is just too big. All the stitches are stretched out to the sides and it just doesn't look nice. So I took the big decision to remake the whole thing. But first I procrastinated and used my mom's yarn winder just because it's much faster than doing it by hand and it was something else to do. Then finally I persuade myself to open the whole thing and it was more fun than I thought. Welcome back. As you know I have opened completely the first sweater and that's it how far I am now. So I'm back at the waistline. And uh, I'm knitting maybe the last row of the waist. Uh, so, yeah, I had some trouble first uh, with remaking it all, but honestly, I'm happy I did. Because, as I said, if I don't like the sweater, I wouldn't wear it. But now I'm pretty. certain that it will fit me better. Now I'm actually a bit uh, scared that it's too big. <laughs> I don't know. But because when I made the recalculation I realized 
I didn't even calculate it wrong or something. I, I don't know what I did. So I had way, way, way too less stitches and I don't know how that come. And for the waistline this time I have these super fine needles, or super fine that's one centimeter needles. <laughs> the funny thing is I wasn't able to buy some. So these are needles the mother of my friend uh, gave me because she found them in her stock. And they are probably from 1900, so I'm knitting with authentic needles. I used hair elastics to stop the stitches from falling off the needles, but sometimes it didn't work. So it was a really delicate work and I had to concentrate a lot just to avoid that all the stitches fall off the needles. I thought I would give you a short overview about what I have made so far and what I've changed in comparison to the first try. And the first thing is I made the fancy stitch at the edge a little bit different. Now they are more like little blocks. There's more texture in it. That's the one thing change. And the other is here can you see the side, uh, side line? where I minored uh, the stitches and the instruction says you should do that when there is a stitch and not the purl stitch and I changed it. I minored with uh, three or where the purl stitch should be so you don't see it that much. You only see those two lines who go straight up and those who end in yeah at the side of these lines. That's what I think I like more, so I did that. And this time you also can see the difference between the thicker needles here and the finer needles up here. So I'm really glad I had now the opportunity to knit with those finer needles up here. So the difference is bigger. And yeah, now I have to knit three rows more, I guess another shirt and then I will do another row of the fancy stitch or another line there are four rows and then I will make the fitting and hope it is better now this was a point where I wasn't that enthusiastic about knitting anymore but I wanted again to see if it fits so I went on bit confused let's say <laughs> because the pattern says I should knit from the waistline so here 11 inches and then start with binding off or almost binding off because I knit a couple of rows for the um, buttonholes but still if I take 11 inches that wouldn't fit me <laughs> So um, I'm a little bit confused because also it says uh, normally it would be knit in two parts and sewn together at the sidelines. So at the sides. So they said I should knit it, uh, sew it together to, uh, up to 15 and a half inch. It would be here. So the whole thing would sit somewhere like this so now that's approximately how high this side seam would be but then I don't have the small knitting at the waistline anymore so I think what I'm going to do now is to take it like that Start now only knitting the front part, then, or maybe I start with the back part. Then I will do the front part. And if I, I the gap here, I can sew that close if it's too big or too deep. 
but I can't open it again. So I think it's better to start now in two, now in two separate parts and if necessary sew it together here. For the whole project I used six yarn balls, so at some parts I knitted with two yarn balls in order to avoid a hard transition of the colors. So right now I have another fitting, or well, I had another fitting and then as you can maybe see, I'm almost there, I think. I can pull both sides up to where they should meet at the shoulder line but if I do it at the back side I pull all the waistline up so I think I will just knit at each panel one inch more or maybe one and a half so that I have a little bit of stretch but not too much and again I had to wind another ball and this time I hadn't the handy winding tool so I made up my own winding tool with some chairs another trick I learned from my mom is to always wind around the thumb so that the ball isn't too dense afterwards and there's not that much tension on the threads et voila the first two pieces are done and look how big the sleeve is it's it's amazing it's really wow and i already knitted the whole sleeve and i didn't film because i mostly knitted at night um, but i thought i would show you something because yeah i thought i've gotten so the front and back piece of the bodice is done with some um, um, buttonholes here and at the side here too and then I made the sleeve and what's really really funny I think is I thought okay this will be set in like this but no it isn't it's like this here is the other part so it's set in like this and this part here will be gathered with a box pleat and some um and four other pleats so i'm really curious how this will work out and you can slightly see it these two don't have the same color because yeah i under no I, yes i underestimated how much material i need so I had to get way more and luckily this yarn is hand dyed by my mother and <clears throat> she had the same recipe and remade it but two different dyeing lots won't turn out the same it's exactly the same recipe but it doesn't look the same so I made here a transition between the two yarns and I have a leftover exactly the same amount I used here for the other sleeve so I have a little bit of a transition here so I hope in three dimensions you have somewhat of a transitioning from this color to this color in the sleeve and just look how long the sleeve is this lower part here will turn upside down like this but yeah this whole part here will make a big how do you call it puffy sleeve <laughs> and here yeah now you can see it here you see a difference between the patterns it's exactly the same pattern the only difference in knitting is this part here is knitting, knitted in rounds and this is knitted forth and back and only the direction of how I knit creates a different pattern but I think I thought here I have the same problem but you don't see it that much anymore so I think with some time and moving it around 
maybe washing at one time this will disappear and give a one smooth appearance and here you can see this is the last row I knit with the old yarn so yeah next step is to knit the other sleeve and then sew it all together now I had to knit the last piece, the sleeve, and it felt like it took ages. Maybe I would have been faster if I cloned myself for only knitting purposes. But finally I also finished the second sleeve and now went on to make the pleats like they were described in the instructions. I also pinned together the tiny part where the buttons sit. following I stitch them together each part by itself in order to already have the pleats and everything in place. Now that the pleats and the upper part of the bodice were basted into place I started to set in the sleeve joining the lower edge and the box pleat with the shoulder seam. With my first tries I got so confused that I now double checked if the buttonholes are on the top and every pleat is where it should be. The sewing was now relatively easy because I had the pleats already in place so I just had to make sure that I don't miss any layer. the buttons. I don't like to just use those transparent ones so I thought I made some crocheted one so that I oh, that I cover those buttons with the crochet but I don't like it. <laughs> I think the contrast isn't strong enough. You can't see those buttons they completely disappear I think I will go for some metal ones and then I have to wait until the lockdown is uh, yeah, finished. Well, lockdown didn't end, but I was able to purchase some buttons I liked online. So now I was able to finally finish the sweater. I sewed on the buttons with a black thin thread because the yarn itself was too thick. And I said I wouldn't use the transparent buttons, but I realized that at some points the buttons wouldn't be at the front because they were covered by the collar. You will see what I mean in a following shot. So I sewed together the metallic button and at the back side the transparent button so that I could use the button itself and the metallic one is just decorative. The very last step was to strengthen the buttonholes. I used the yarn I used for the whole garment and used the buttonhole stitch and covered the ends of the threads on the back side of the knitting. So this is the whole thing. It's finally finished. I'm very proud of it. I'm proud that I opened it and remade it. And I hope I will wear it a lot. Oh, and here is it with a corset underneath. So, do you see the difference?
And as always, feel free to subscribe. I will upload whenever a project is finished. And I wish you a good time until then. Bye!